speaker is uh, David uh, Clinton Wales. Um, David uh, Ern is a PhD in philosophy from SUNY Stony Brook University in New York with a certificate in criticism and theory from Cornell University. Currently he teaches in liberal studies at New York University. He has recently presented at the Association for Israel Studies, published his research on Eritrean and Sudanese asylum seekers, and is developing a larger book project entitled Black Israel. And this is the very intriguing uh, name of the title of this, uh, <laughs> this uh, presentation, and I'm looking forward to know what it means. <laughs> Please, David. Thank you very much. Um, oh. <laughs> Zionist Teda Herzl says regarding the founding of the State of Israel, if you will it, it is no dream. And African refugees from Sudan and Eritrea emblem this mantra as they escaped brutal situations of mandatory conscription and genocide by crossing the Sinai Peninsula to enter Israel in the late 2000s, where the 1951 Refugee Convention means that while in Israel, they must be sheltered. In spite of these international conventions, Israel has reactivated the Prevention of Infiltration Law from 1954 that declares the enemy status of Palestinians and prevents them from returning to and reclaiming previously held lands as refugees, as well as barring anyone who has crossed, entered, or comes from an enemy nation, such as Egypt and the Sinai Peninsula. All others are dangerous. Legally, this places complications regarding the idea of Palestinians as refugees upon African refugees, as well as highlighting current debates on Palestinians as refugees. The current question of African refugees is related to the internal question of Israeli identity, as African refugee status is couched in anti-Palestinian law, and anti-Palestinian law is grounded in the estrangement of Israelites from Israel's ancestral land. Black, Arab, and Israeli, all changing, overlapping, ambiguous, different, and manifold designators of identity are interdependent and intertwined. This paper examines the manifold of these issues that affect Eritrean and Sudanese refugees and asylum seekers in Israel through the intersection of ethical, political, social, and legal vectors as emblematic of global migration issues across the world. These vectors articulate the conception of shifting notions of the idea of the refugee on a global scale, as well as how these issues of refugees are especially trenchant in this particular situation, and yet they are both an echo and source of this issue globally, as this question is additionally manifest in Europe and North America. And they show the linkage between national law and the social imaginary through aspirations and ideologies of how the ideal, law-obeying, loyal citizen of the nation state should look as the modern era becomes particularly entrenched, becomes a particularly entrenched battle of nationalist and globalist concerns. Refugee issues highlight local conflicts in transnational ways. While national law rejects African refugees, international law keeps them in, forming a liminal and imaginary identity and space for African refugees in Israel as the specter of the infiltrating other materializes embodiment as an African refugee. This liminality evidences social complications in the idea of the refugee in Israel and specifically that idea as it applies to black bodies, showing the space of what is even a refugee in a land of people struggling with and engendering that very definition. The African refugee occupies a space of imagination. Black refugees experience the pre-existent racial issues that black Israelis already face. And these issues are exacerbated as they are kept in the society in a limited political status. Since their arrival in the early 2000s, 
um, only less than about 15 refugees from Eritrea and Sudan have been granted asylum status, and the remainder must regularly renew their legal documentations every month, um, and for some more so in the, in the two to three month range. Spaces, such as the recently closed Holot detention facility, are used to detain refugees in cooperation with penalizing laws to collect additional taxes from them and de facto discriminations, making life for these refugees unstable and constantly in peril. These ways of legal and societal oppressions extend naturally to the political, as the amount of refugees in Israel constitutes less than half of 1% of the country's total populations, with black Israelis being around 2% of the country's total population. However, the issue has become a lightning rod for Israeli and global anxieties of Palestinians, race, nationalism, and the 2018 nationality law, which shows the implementation of legal discourse to create the racial character of the polis inventing an ethno-religious national citizenry of Israel through the conjuring and codification of the imaginary into the real by the stricture and rule of law, and therefore keeping those outside of that national, religious, or ethnic character from being represented politically, as now, like the Palestinians and other Arab Israelis, the Druze argue that the nationality law places them in an exteriorized status regarding citizenship, much like a non-citizen or refugee, and that this issue is inherently racial, one of being an unideal, non-white member of the polis. A very small population causes an immense and contagious fear. Anti-infiltration law against African refugees and Palestinians and nationality law against Druze and non-Jewish people are argued as fundamentally racial codes, wherein the resurrection of the anti-infiltration law, the concomitant genesis of the nationality law, is realized as the hollow, and I use the word um, hollow from Akhil and Bembe's On the Post Colony, hollow liminal spaces of the Holot detention facility, which echo and encode phantasmic identities in the spatialization of nationality. An imagined Israeli is born against a hidden African refugee and other citizen non-citizens, like the Druze, moved outside of the border of viable and visible political space and being, or outright deported in the case of refugees. A nation is birthed. Accentuated vectors of ethics, politics, society, and law parse spatial and territorial realities into coinciding narratives of internment as Druze culture, predominantly in North Israel, becomes a de facto ghetto of marginalization, much like spaces like Halot does because of anti-infiltration law, and even southern Tel Aviv, known as Little Africa. Land coincides with a generative space in which loyalty to culture is challenged in these fecund moments of who is occupying this space, how they're occupying it, and what is created within it. Loyalty and filiality intersect, making concomitant the action with the identity of the person performing them as the state paternalizes its relationship to the citizen in law. As such, to be Israeli is to be loyal to Zionism in subordinates, which is different from what loyalty really is. Negating space for cultural disloyalty, negating space for thought, which is a negative dialectic of nationalist interests, so the cultural loyalty bill, although effective upon art and artistic production, concomitantly affects art's inspiring function of political dissidence or a dissidence towards Zionism and loyalty as nationalist interest states what colors can be used, what art can be produced, what color of what citizens are okay, what bodies can be reproduced, with the cultural loyalty bill intersecting with the nationality law, which intersects with the prevention of infiltration law, and all ultimately asking, what is Zionism? 
How is it allowed to be represented? And more trenchantly, what is loyalty? Dissent further exacerbates establishment of the norm, pushing and defining a furthered nationalism. Again, just as in the eternal question of Israeli and therefore Jewish identity becomes embedded in the question of citizenship and nation, the contemporary Jewish question is that of the imbuing and imbricating of spirit into space, of fighting hegemony without reproducing it, of Israel having a Jewish character, looking at how and whose identities and ideas of refugees are formed, who gets to claim this identity of being dehumanized, of being human, and how the idea of the human spirit, and therefore human, are even defined as contemporary African and Palestinian questions of refugee and human identity, as well as Druid's questions of national belonging are inherently, or the artistic question of cultural loyalty and cultural production are contained within post-Holocaust traumas of Jewish citizenry, also a people who faced ethnic cleansing and genocide, similar to the very African refugees that they reject with Nazism once as another historical instantiation of cultural loyalty, of what art can be made or must be damned, of what words may be spoken or go unsaid. Cultural loyalty has been historically near ideas of cultural hegemony, as that trauma causes a kind of fear with loyalty as the instantiation of safety. As Michel Foucault tiles and states in his lectures, society must be defended. I add a variation of that, it must be kept safe. This emblems a deep issue of the ethical, as African refugees are lost as sight of being humans, and as the ethical character of the Jewish state says to treat the stranger as one would want to be treated, we see that it is anything but that as citizens get reimagined as strangers and therefore unloyal subjects, showing the notion and idea of the refugee or non-citizen as a manifold and shifting political weapon of personhood writ large, being reimagined as Israel's being refounded in every political action and choice. The mixture and miscegenation of refugee and citizen, stranger and self, changes borders and narratives in the very foundations of global culture and who we are. It must be sought out, the question of sight and the recognition of the face with regard to African refugees in Tel Aviv as human subjects, as people contributing to the culture of Israel and as part of it instead of outside of it constituting the nation instead of being imagined as endangering it. The law of nationality becomes concomitant to the loyalty of culture, and just as these people are black, they are also Israeli, being remade of Israeli substance, dreaming and willing a certain Israeli dream, asking for the ways and significations in which an African can also be Israeli, if only with the refugees' temporary request for the promise of national safety, asking if a black person can be Israeli, as miscegenation and mixed race, mixed nation children are birthed in the Israeli nation, as children of African biology, genetics, religions, and parents are born in the Israeli nation. Of the question of what it means to be loyal to both of these cultures, even when the identities might also be ones in conflict, individuals nonetheless take root here. And being of the nation requires being loyal to its culture, a culture, a national culture, that may be engaged in the project of rejecting its very own citizens. Such as with the LGBTQ community, same-sex parent adoptions, and the Surrogacy Act, in which sexuality, sex, and gender show deeply entrenched issues of national inequality undergirding the very same problems that the Druze claim and African refugees face and belying a dearth of hope for a nation of will and dreams, 
for Israelis who may very well be white Ashkenazi, however gay and in same-sex relationships. Societal inequality in Israel affects many, as female identifying individuals also protest the imbalance of living here, and as imbalances affect everyone, regardless of their identity. With that, the circumstances of its ontogenesis, the story and retelling of its births, all foam and foment at the surface, along borders and lines, and in the subtle ways in which space buffers bodies. Our actions, even the action of just simply presence, and the presence of a face, were in both the production of the citizenry and its imaginary, narrows along the keenest line to become further and further entrenched in a specific and maybe singular notion of being. Amongst many questions, most contemporary one that Israel faces is of its own imagination, of how it envisions itself, and how it narrates its complexities, and that transposition from the imaginary to the embodied. That ability to imagine the world has always been the hardest thing in the life of humankind. That idea of the world is the world. In Israel, evidences this complexity of the world in these problems, and seeing that shows everything. Seeing that, allowing sight of everything, and of the parts of the culture that are visible, and the parts also made invisible, and yet placed within, as will and dreams, imagination and action have to be ethical as well. Thank you. Ta-da. Do, do I have a few more minutes? Are we completely yeah, out of time? Yeah, I think we can have five more. Yeah, I, I, I read it like a, a, a runaway train okay. um, in, the, in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I just wanted to share with you okay. um, an arc of photos. Um, some of these are from the past year. Um, I took a lot from two weeks in December. Um, a month this summer, and then two weeks just like literally before this conference. So this is at the schoolhouse, um, which is a, a school for um, you know African refugees and asylum seekers. And like in a lot of the photos I took, um, it was always about um, like me taking sight of um, like black life in the city. Um, and I think for my own self, um, like just remembering um, like the importance of like humanity and like recognizing um, like faces and 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 so forth. I'd have to say, yeah. A good friend of mine. Um, I've been developing this project over the last three years, um, and so some of these people that I've met through trips to the Holot detention facility. Um, some of these people are people I met through like community centers and like friends of friends, um, and they all have um, just incredibly um, like rich and and um, powerful stories um, of surviving a tremendous amount to just kind of um, you know make it make it here. Um, and I was talking actually to. Um, another conference attendee earlier um, about how grateful, you know, I would, I would say somewhere between nearly all, probably every, I would say every single refugee I've spoken with has actually like expressed a gratitude um, to Israel, um, that they're very like thankful and, and grateful for Israel. And a lot of the refugees also talk about, um, you know, what, what they like think and what they kind of thought um, like Judaism um, like is um, and a lot of them would say variations of um, that they came here because they thought that the Jewish people would protect them um, they came to Israel out of like a idealism and idolization of what Judaism means um, what Zionism means um, and like who these people are. Um, and these photos were some of my favorites because you also see a kind of complicated and beautiful mix of, um, you know, 
Israeli citizens, um, probably some American citizens, um, and obviously a mix of the African um, refugees. So I think some of the most beautiful and like richest moments are these moments of when um, Israelis and Africans create something um, together in a very kind of complicated world that we live in. Um, I think creation is obviously, creation broadly speaking is more ideal than destruction, probably. <laughs> a lot of photos from like little Africa. Um, so this was on New Year's Eve. Um, that was my wild New Year's Eve, actually just walking around the central bus station because I'm totally just blown away with how special that place is. And I also look for these kind of small, quiet moments. So obviously you see, you know, a lot of the refugees, they're always, um, broadly speaking, engaged in um, like sanitation, cleaning, um, service work, um, back of kitchen, um, construction. Um, and I think there is a kind of powerful juxtaposition to just seeing them like living and, and kind of being alive. Um, and yet in a paper that I published in 2017, I also engaged with the topic of, you know, they, they concretely like regenerate the city. They, they clean the city and they construct the city and um, they do this like kind of complicated and similar service work to um, the Filipino caregivers just in a kind of a different, that's my barber shop. Um, when you're in a foreign country, you still need to get your hair cut. Um, amazing man that I met at Sorona, made a fantastic steak. And again, just people with incredible stories. So that's all. Thank you all so much. Thank you.